And take three. Uh, hi, sixth graders. We're going to be learning about NAFTA today. NAFTA stands for, well, first I'll just show it to you. This is how you'll see it many times. NAFTA, it actually stands for something. And this is what it stands for, North American Free Trade Agreement. So your essential question is, what is NAFTA? Write that down. What is NAFTA? NAFTA is the North American Free Trade Agreement. Well, you know that's not good enough for me. If you just write down what is NAFTA and then you write down this, that's not ever going to be good enough. You need to explain what it is. So here's what it is. It's an agreement between Mexico, Canada, and the United States of America. If you picture in your mind a map of North America, those are the three big countries. Now there are some smaller countries below Mexico, but the three giant countries are Mexico, the United States, and Canada make up the bulk of the North American continent. And those three countries came together a long time ago, in the, I believe in the 1990s, when President Clinton was our president, and they agreed to lower all trade barriers. Now, if you've watched the trade barriers video, you know that, that when you lower trade barriers, what is that going to do? Yes, that's right. It's going to encourage trade. <laughs> that means that if I make something in Mexico, and I want to sell it in the United States of America, America has agreed not to put a tariff, not to put a quota, and certainly not to put an embargo on anything coming from Mexico. So you're basically making a giant economic, one economic zone, and that's what they call it. It's the North American Free Trade Zone, where if you're a, a part person in Canada, the United States, or Mexico, you can trade freely in those three countries without fear of tariffs or embargoes. Why would you do that? Well, you're trying to encourage trade. And of course, we know that when trade is encouraged, our GDP starts to rise. So that's a good thing. And it has. It has helped the, I think it has helped the economies of Mexico, the United States, and Canada overall. But could it be a bad thing? Some argue that it is a bad thing because Say in a country like Mexico, their minimum wage is much lower than our minimum wage. So their workers are encouraged to produce things at a very, very low price, then ship those things to America to be sold for a high price, and uh, it really uh, hurts American. It, it hurts American workers and it hurts American business. That was a that was a big fear. That American farmers are going to be put out of business. Uh, a lot of small-time American farmers will be put out of business because Mexican farms could produce uh, goods cheaper than um, American farms could, and therefore they could sell them. Uh, they could sell, you know, orange is an orange, but a Mexican orange would be cheaper because it was uh, cheaper to produce. And so, what are we going to buy? We're going to buy the cheaper bag of oranges, of course. So it did. It did hurt folks in that regard. It did hurt uh, some Mexican farmers. I won't get into all of that. Uh, you don't hear much about it either hurting or helping the Canadians. I don't know if it did or not. I don't know what's going on up there. Uh, but I do know that uh, just because of my specialization in college, I heard a lot about NAFTA between the United States and Mexico. So NAFTA, just to kind of conclude this lesson. NAFTA is the North American Free Trade Agreement. You can kind of think about it almost like an economic confederation, if you understand confederations. It's an alliance. It's an agreement between these guys that we're not going to put any trade barriers in front of each other, and we're going to make trading very easy for each other in the hope that we would boost all three countries' GDP. So, you definitely need to know who it's between, Canada, the USA, and Mexico. Thank you for your time.